What's up folks, it's Eric from Option Edge, and in today's video, I wanna show you how to utilize ChatGPT to discover money printing option strategies. All right folks, it's Eric with Option Edge, and today we're talking about using ChatGPT to consistently profit with options to create basically your own little money printer, okay? So before I show you exactly how to create this money printer using AI chat GPT, we have to define a few things so it makes sense to you what is going on. I always think that if you understand the why, it'll just help you understand everything else so much better. So let's define a few things and get into it. Here we go. First thing, let's talk about tail risk. It's the risk of an extreme event occurring that could drastically change the value of your portfolio or investment. Um, it's, it's called tail risk because this kind of event is often at the tail ends of a probability distribution indicating that these events are unlikely but not possible. So think think about black swan events, think about COVID-19, 9-11, um, things like that that would drastically move the mar market. Very, very low probability of happening, but they do happen every once in a blue moon, okay? So here's a good graph just showing uh, tail risk and tail events. You have the majority of your outcomes are going to be in the middle here. Uh, you got some outcomes to the sides, but very few times will you have uh, downside tail risk moves or upside tail risk moves, okay? And and something to take note of, think positive tail risks uh, are associated with gains uh, if you're long and negative uh, tail risks are associated with losses if you are uh, long as well. All right, next term, kurtosis. Kurtosis is a statistical measure that essentially measures the tailedness of the probability distribution of a real valued random variable. Okay, so what's that mean? Basically, kurtosis is a way of describing the tails of a distribution graph, okay? So this is a positive kurtosis, this graph, and it's gonna have fatter tails, okay? So that's all you have to know. It's all gonna make sense when we get into the AI portion of the video, so please stick with me. All right, and the next term we're gonna talk about is skew. So what is skew? In the context of stock performance, skewness or skew refers to the measure of the asymmetry of the probability distribution of a real value random variable about, the, about its mean, blah, blah, blah. Um, so what's that mean? Basically, if we see positive skew in a stock's returns, that means that there's gonna be, it has in the past had frequent large gains. If you see a negative skew, it means the stock has had frequent large losses, okay? So keep that in mind. Okay, so the tail risk analysis, their kurtosis, and the skew are all historical looking, meaning they're backward looking. They've happened, they are realized. And now we're gonna change things up. We're gonna look at volatility skew, which is forward looking in the option market. So we have a picture here of Netflix, and this is showing the different strikes. And on the Y axis, you can see implied volatility goes from low to high and it's showing at the money is around 100, the 100 uh, strike uh, below the money. It's gonna be 90, 60, blah, blah, blah. Those are the puts. Above that is gonna be calls. So what you see is the call side has very little IV compared to the put side, okay? So this is how, this is normal for most stocks because usually when you have a drop in the stock market, it drops fast. You have slow and consistent gains most of the time. Sometimes you might have big spikes to the upside, but normally it's a slow and consistent gain to the upside. And then if there's a crash, it's a sudden rip to the downside. So this volatility skew is common in most names. And this is just uh, describing what I just said. You have normal skew is the options reflections that the downside risk is usually larger than the upside tail opportunity. That's why there's more implied volatility in the puts here. Like I said, implied volatility is forward looking. Okay, we're done defining terms. Now let's lay out the actual four step process of how we're gonna make money printing option strategies using ChatGPT. So first, we're gonna look for charts that look good. They have bullish, uh, bullish charts. Uh, I use AI charting services for this. Um, then we're gonna do some tail analysis using ChatGPT, statistical models that ChatGPT easily computes for us, okay? Then we're gonna utilize ChatGPT to find positive asymmetry or positive skew in these underlying stocks. We're gonna do some options back testing and see which ones work. So let's get into it. All right, folks, I am in CML Viz or Capital Market Laboratories. They just integrated the limited language model of ChatGPT with financial information that's real time, okay? So let's look here. All you have to do is uh, ask it a question. Uh, you can find alpha, you can find volatility. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna compare the tail risk of different stocks and look at their skew and then compare that to the options volatility and see what the options market is giving us. So let's look at, let's compare Microsoft 
compare Microsoft to the market. And we're going to ask, and it's running its AI, doing some statistical analysis. Now, ChatGPT just yielded us a bunch of data. What we want to see is we, we're comparing Microsoft to the SPY, okay? So in the last almost three and a half years, the stock itself has returned 108% to the spies, 31%, so more than triple, basically. Um, but what we want to look at mostly is the outperformance and underperformance, okay, the kurtosis. So what we see here is we actually see a larger underperformance, kurtosis of underperformance, so uh, fatter tails to the negative side, then we see fatter tails to the positive side, okay? And then when we look at the returns, uh, then when we analyze skewness, which is basically showing us whether there's larger up days or larger losses. We're gonna see larger losses in Microsoft, okay? And then if we look at the one year, you can see similar results. We see uh, a larger underperformance kurtosis versus the outperformance, and then skewness, uh, the downside skewness is also larger. But what's interesting, Microsoft has returned significantly more than the SPY. Now I just hopped over to Market Chameleon to look at the volatility skew. So what we should see is puts that have higher volatility than the calls. And you see that exactly with Microsoft. And it makes sense. The underperformance and skewness is to the downside. So we should see higher premiums in puts than we see in calls. Okay, so try and keep that all in mind. Let's compare at, uh, Microsoft to Apple now. Okay, let's let the AI do its thing. It's running its models. Okay, here you have it. So Apple has returned 141% to, to SPY's uh, 31%. So it's it's significantly outperformed. But what's interesting is Apple's outperformance, kurtosis, has fatter tails to the upside, and then the skew is skewed to the upside. So positive skews, uh, more frequent, larger gains. And you have a similar thing going on with the one-year returns, you know, up 20% to the SPY's 2.1%. The kurtosis is much larger than the underperformance kurtosis, and then we're seeing upside skew larger than downside skew. All right, we're back in Market Chameleon, analyzing the IV of the different strikes. You're seeing a normal IV skew. Puts have higher implied volatility, more premium than the call side. Now, if you go back to what we just analyzed, that doesn't really make sense. We're seeing actually larger outperformance, larger fat tails, and larger skew to the upside. So the options market is actually mispricing volatility to the downside. So when we see this, we can take an adv advantage of this by either selling puts or buying calls. Puts are expensive, so we'll we're gonna sell them, and calls are cheap, so we're gonna buy them. So now let's look at the back test. And one more thing, before we look at the back test, I just wanna, uh, here's another cool statistical printout showing the daily returns, okay? Uh, and you can see the green lines are much, much, just visually you can see that the green is more frequent and larger than the red drops. All right, so I am in my options back testing software, which is called Trade Machine Pro. I'm, I wanna sell put spreads that expire every week. And the reason why I'm doing weekly is because it's the shortest expiration date. And when I just showed you that, um, that analysis we did was on daily returns. So we want uh, the expiry that is, uh, closest to one day, which would be uh, seven days, all right? So let's enter Apple into the back tester. We wanna short it. We wanna do, the only special thing we're gonna do is we're not gonna trade earnings, okay? Because earnings are, are uh, an animal of itself. And we are gonna see how well selling a put spread works. All right, so we just ran the back test on Apple. And as you can see, selling a put spread in Apple every seven days has yielded great returns with a high win rate. This shows you how we can take advantage of the data that ChatGPT gives us about the tail risk and the skew of a stock and then compare that to the volatility skew and use options to take advantage of sort of like a mispricing more or less. So now we're running an analysis on Microsoft and seeing what the back test yields uh, doing the same thing as we did with Apple. So you see a much different result with Microsoft uh, besides this here. This is actually a winning strategy. Remember when we looked at Microsoft and I showed you how the underperformance of kurtosis, which was higher, and this, the negative skew was also higher than the both the 
outperformance of Kurtosis and the positive skew. Remember that? So what's so interesting about Microsoft is it's a stock that really outperformed the uh, S&P 500 greatly in the last couple of years. And meanwhile, it is uh, this bullish option strategy is a losing strategy overall minus this. And then actually, you know, this wasn't was actually a pretty good strategy. But overall, um, you can see it was mostly losing when you, you change the strikes. But uh, and that was primarily because when we look at the kurtosis of overperformance versus underperformance, Microsoft had more underperformance. And if we look at the skew, Microsoft had more of a negative skew than positive skew. So this is an example of how we can use this AI to find the tail risk of different stocks and then use options to benefit uh, based on that tail risk. All right, so I showed you two stocks that have outperformed the S&P 500 greatly, um, but had different tail uh, analysis. So let's look at a stock that hasn't performed quite as well as Apple or Microsoft and see if we can apply the same tail analysis and back testing uh, like we did to the last two. So we're going to look at Datadog, which I believe in the last couple of years hasn't outperformed the S&P 500. If it has, it's been very little. So let's look at Datadog over the past one year. So you can see the kurtosis outperformance is much larger than the underperformance. And then you can see the skew is also much larger. But look at the stock return compared to the S&P 500. Now, can we do a similar strategy with Datadog? Um, by looking at the tail analysis. Now, since Datadog has a favorable tail analysis, but has a negative return, will the options, uh, will selling a, a put spread be a profitable strategy? Let's look at the back test. All right, so here's Datadog looking at the one year back test. So here is the one year back test for the 4030 Delta puts. You can see it returned 241%. Now, this stock had a negative 10.3% return. So I find that quite amazing that we can have a 241% return when a stock with a bullish strategy uh, with a stock that returned uh, less, uh, which was had a negative 10% return. So that is the power of tail analysis using ChatGPT. And uh, yeah, that's sort of it. Uh, hope you guys like this stuff. Please uh, comment, like, share, and let me know what's good. Peace out.